Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today you'll be traveling all over the United States and using resources to complete a variety of life opportunities. You'll be a unique character with a special skill that will allow you to complete opportunistic challenges for milestone points. You'll also be developing more skills to widen your horizon of opportunities, all while navigating through public events that can either aid or detract from your ability to gain those milestone points. Today we're taking a look at Sperling's Best Places. It's for two to four players, it's ages 10 and up, and plays between 30 and 45 minutes. Now we're doing a rule school, so I'm gonna teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. Now I've placed timestamps in the description below me, which will help you jump to a specific section of the rules if you'd like to. Now without further ado, let's get started. Sperling's Best Places is a game for two to four player, where you'll be a unique character that gives you skills for either community, economy, arts and culture, or education that help you complete opportunities. You'll be moving to different cities throughout the game and gaining cards, money, and skills that that city offers. You'll be using all this to develop more skills and to be trying to complete opportunities by spending a certain amount of money, but the better you are at that skill, the less money it costs. But there'll be public events and chance cards that can help you on your way to completing opportunities, but other cards can hinder your progress. So over the course of the game, you'll be managing cards and money and skills to try to complete opportunities as fast as you can and be the first to get to 20 milestone points to win the game. To set up, first separate out the four character cards and the four player aid cards from the deck of cards. Now these cards are double-sided, so they're easy to find, and you're gonna separate these out and put them off to the side for now, then shuffle the big deck of cards. Then place the game board in the middle of the table where everyone can reach it, and then alongside that you can place all the coins, the two dice, and the shuffled deck of cards. Then each player is going to select a color. They're going to take the pawn and the move token from that color and place it in front of them. If you're playing with less than four players, any unused tokens and pawns can be placed back in the box. Then starting with the youngest player and going clockwise, each player is going to select one of the four character cards. You can put either side face up in front of you, and you each take one player aid card and put that in front of you as well. Any cards not used if you're playing with less than four players can be placed back in the box. Each player will also get one coin from the supply, so at the beginning of the game I have my character, my player aid, my pawn, my move token, and a coin. Each player will then roll one die. Whoever has rolled the highest number will be the first player to decide which city they start in. However, if more than one player is tied for the highest roll, those tied players will roll one more time and continue doing this until any one player has the highest roll to be the first to place in a city. That player will place their opponent any city of their desire, and then each player will do this clockwise from that player. The other players can place in any open city that's not already occupied by somebody else. If this is your first time playing, don't worry too much about which city to start in, just pick a city you like. The object of the game is to be the first to get to 20 milestone points. Over the course of the game, you'll be getting these points by completing certain opportunities. For example, the Thought Leader, your invention has brought you worldwide recognition. And in order to get these milestone points, you'll be paying a certain amount of coins to do that. Players will take turns in clockwise order until any one player ends the game by getting those 20 milestone points. Now starting with the start player, the first turn of the game, what you'll do first is, wherever you are in the city, in this case I'm in Denver, you'll take this many cards from the top of this shuffled deck, in this case it's three cards, and you'll also take three coins from the supply and put them in front of you. So I added my three coins to my one, and I've got my three cards. Now these cards are typically held secretly in your hand, but I have them down on the table so you can see them easily. I have two opportunity cards and a skill card. Now this opportunity card is the one I showed you earlier, which means uh, we need to spend five coins by default, but this has an economic skill set there. Now if you remember, we're in Denver, which also has an economic skill set. And our character card also has an economic skill set. So by default, normally you'd have to spend five, but because I'm in Denver, and because I have this entrepreneur, it's gonna cost me two less, so only three. However, if we look here, we have skill cards. What these allow you to do is add different types of skills throughout the game, which allow you to get through opportunities cheaper. 
and these have a cost as well. So let's say I did this. I spent my two coins and I put this card in play face up in front of me so everyone can see it. And this says Pawn Star. Your pawn shop is picked up by a national television network. You receive a discount for economic opportunity cards for the rest of the game. So not only did I have minus one because I'm in Denver, minus one here, minus one here, it's minus three. So five minus three is two. I could spend these last two coins that I have to finish this opportunity, and now I've actually just got four milestone points. Remember, you get to 20 and you win. Now, this is still just in my hand. I don't have any other money to do this with, so I'll just keep this in my hand for my next turn. Now, the last thing you do at the end of your turn is optional. If you have a coin to spend and you would like to, you can take your move token and you can place it in any unoccupied city that does not have a pawn or any other move token, either in the region that you're in. Notice these lines here. There are four different regions. We have this region, two, three, and four. You can either spend one coin to place your move token in any of the spots that's unoccupied in your region or any adjacent region. So maybe I want to come over here and I want to get some more coins, but less cards. Maybe I come over here to Chicago, but I want to stick with economic, for example. This just shows me that next turn, at the beginning of my turn, I'll be able to move my pawn there and remove my move token from there. So at this point, it would go to the next player clockwise, and every player would take turns like the one I just showed. Let's say it comes back to me and it's our turn again. At the, at the beginning of your turn, if there is a move token there of your type that you've placed on the previous turn, you'll simply move there and take this back. And then you'll do the actions that's in the city that you live in. So in this case, we have two cards and four coins. So let's say we have my four coins we just got and we drew two cards. These are the cards we played earlier. Now we've shown you two of the four card types. We've showed you the opportunity and the skill. You've not seen public event or chance. If when drawing cards, you draw a public event and or a chance card, they must be uh, enacted immediately. If you actually draw a public event and a chance, public event happens first, then chance. Let's look at what these do. Now when activating a public event, if both these spots are empty like at the beginning of the game, it'll just go to the first spot. And this says all education opportunity cards cost one less. If later on another public event comes up, this one would slide down and the new one would go here. If another one would come out, this one would push off and this one would come down and the new card would come up like this. Now some events don't trigger until they get pushed off as I just showed. This gold rush says until this card is removed from the public event track, each player draws one extra card at the start of their turn. So some of them work until they get triggered off. Now you know how the public events work and how they cycle through. Let's look at the chance cards because these also get activated right away. It says bonus, your hard work this year was noticed by all the right people. Gain two coins or draw a card. So in this case, let's just say we gain two coins from the supply. This would then get discarded off to the side of the board. Now, we did have another opportunity card that we didn't yet play. And this uses education. You're trying to be a bookworm and open up a new lo uh, local library for readers of all ages. It's worth three milestone points and it costs four coins. Now we're currently in Chicago, which does not get us a skill of education. However, the public event that came out, again, only one of these cards had really come out in this turn. I was just sort of showing you how this worked. So we have both of them out here now just for show. Now here this says all education opportunities cost one less. So we get a one coin discount at this point. And since neither our character or any skill cards we have has education on it, we get just that one coin discount. So this would cost us three coins. We spend it and then we would place this face up in front of us like this overlapping. So you can see how many points we have seven and again, getting to 20 wins. So just to summarize the turn structure at the beginning of your turn, if you have a move token out there, you'll remove it, place your pawn there and then take the actions that are there, draw as many cards as it's shown and get as many coins as it's shown. And if any of the cards you drew were either public event and or chance, you would immediately activate them as shown previously. You can collect skills by playing them from your hand by paying the certain amount of coins, and you can complete opportunities by spending the amount of coins minus any of the skills you might have, plus some of the skills on your entrepreneur and possibly at the location that you're at. And then finally, on the end of your turn, you can spend a coin to place that move marker to any region that's unoccupied in your region or any one that is adjacent. And this continues in clockwise order until any one player has 20 total milestone points and they win the game immediately. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Sperling's best places quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rule book yourself. Now, if you have any further questions, you can put them as comments below this video and I'll do the best I can to answer them for you.